So today we are going to be looking at some Modbus, uh, specifically Modbus TCP, and then we are going to be a server block. There will be some other videos with us being a client. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we are going to want to get the Modbus library. So if we go to the PLC Next Store, that's plcnextstore.com, and then we type in Modbus, it's going to come up with a few libraries here. Um, we want to get Modbus TCP. Modbus RTU isn't much different. You just have the ability to set all the serial parameters. Um, today I am using um, one of these build 14s. It looks like there is a new build 15 out. Um, I have played with it a little bit, but we're going to continue with 14 for today. So once you download this, you're going to want to unzip it, and then we're going to go ahead and add it to our project. Um, I am going to take... I am going to make a few assumptions that you've done a Hello World project, you know how to connect to the controller, and you know how to set IP addresses and write a basic program. Um, and then we'll go from there. So, libraries. Add a library. Add user library. Um, if we go to downloads where I downloaded that Modbus TCP 14, you'll see that here it is. And then under files, there's the library. So once we've added the library to the software, we now have some new function blocks um, given to us up here under the Modbus TCP library. And we're gonna be looking at this server block specifically. Now I have added it to our program already, so I do have a little bit of a head start, but let's go through it. So the first one is X activate, that's do you wanna turn the server block on or not? X acknowledge is to acknowledge errors or alarms. Auto acknowledge acknowledges those alarms automatically and then resets the block after one cycle scan. And then the rest of these, um, we all basically leave alone, whether you wanna be in UDP or TCP mode, if we wanna bind any of the IP addresses or ports so it can only talk to one specific device, we can do that. And then we have our reconnect delay and our timeouts. Those have some stock values in them that work for us, so we're just gonna leave them alone. The last little bit is your in and outs. So you're gonna have your uh, arrays of Booleans with your array of coils and your array of inputs. And then you're gonna have your array of words, which is your input registers and your holding registers. Now input registers are read with function code four and holding registers are uh, written and read using function code three and 16. Um, so those are the ones that we are going to focus on specifically today is this holding register uh, package. So what I've done is I've taken and I've moved some of the variables around. So I'm saying take this variable that I've written, convert it to a word, and then put it into holding register zero. Take this one, put it into holding register one, and so on and so forth. And then as we get down, we'll see that we're actually reading data as well. So we're saying turn um, this array, element number 10, back to an integer, and then put it in this data value. The reason I did that was so we could have a little web page where we could actually see what's going on. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier when we get to some of the later videos. So now that we've looked at this a little bit, let's go ahead and pull that piece up. So here is the um, web page running inside the PLC next. Here is QMod Master, which I'm using to just pull the device. So if you'll notice, um, we are already connected to this block because I've been playing with it. If we go ahead and change some of the data, you'll see we have 100, 320, and we're reading the holding registers. So that's gonna be this data, 100, 320, and that's the Modbus server sending that data out, and then we're reading it. So we're saying, you know, if this is 25, and this is 50, and this is 75, and then we go ahead and do a read, you'll notice that all of our values have changed to match what the server is sending us. Um, we're starting at address zero simply because the Modbus server is putting that data into register zero, register one, and register two. Now let's say we want to send the server some data. So we are going to switch over to write multiple registers. So now we're going from reading registers to writing registers. 
And then because the start address is now 10, we now have to have the start address be 10. Um, that's just moving the array around so that we can put, put values into the right spots. Um, so if you'll notice, I've already written 100, 200, and 300. If I change this to 20, 30, and 40, and then we go ahead and do a write, um, you'll notice that we now have 20, 30, and 40 in the read uh, data tab. Um, so this is just a very quick introduction to the Modbus server block. With this, you should be able to send data and receive data from a Modbus client. And our next couple videos will actually be on Modbus clients.